What's up, Pirate Nation, and welcome to Hall Talk. On tonight's show, we give our thoughts on the Final Four. We'll also give you our picks on who will survive and advance out of the weekend. We'll also answer the burning questions for Wisconsin and Kentucky, as well as Michigan State and Duke. It's all coming up next. This is Hall Talk. This team needs to show me something for me to believe that they're going to make a run in the tournament. I think they can have a chance of going over 35 wins without a problem. Just stepping up from the four points to the 17, she's just dropping threes like there's no tomorrow. But chemistry is an underrated key in college basketball. That, that was by far the best game I've seen them play. This is Hall Talk, and that's how the chalk talks. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Hall Talk. Joining me tonight is Mr. John Fanta and Corey Pontanello. And, and Corey, this is your first ever time on Hall Talk, so welcome aboard. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. Let's get to it. John, how are you? Always great, Ryan. What an awesome time of year it is in sports. Final four week has arrived. I know it's your favorite time of the year, so we'll start off with a little yay or nay. How's that sound? It sounds perfect. Let's, do, right. it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So first question to you guys, and this might be a little bit of an obvious one, but a lot of people say Sam Decker might be the best player on the floor versus Kentucky coming up this weekend, but do you guys think it's Frank, Frank Kaminsky overall? Uh, will be the best player out there versus Kentucky this weekend. What do you think? Well, I do think that he's the best player on the floor. Frank Kaminsky, you look at Sam Decker, and this is nothing to take away from Sam Decker, who was fantastic, made several big-time shots. Frank Kaminsky takes up so much attention when he gets the basketball. He is just so fantastic off the dribble at over 20 points in the victory over Arizona this past week and combining with Decker for an awesome effort. And Wisconsin is driven by him constantly. And while Kentucky has fantastic players across okay. the board, I think the best player on the floor this weekend when these two teams meet will be Wisconsin's Frank Kaminsky because, Ryan, he can hurt you from anywhere he goes. I'm so impressed this year, especially with his ability, Corey, to not only take the three-point shot. We knew he could do that. When he gets in the lane, Arizona was having trouble with him. They've got some of the best length in the country, and they couldn't figure out a way to handle him. So, yes, I say yay. John, but when it comes down to who has the best length in the country, and that is the Kentucky Wildcats, Flynn, I think I think it's Decker, the best player on the court. And when you either go against one of the Twin Towers in Culleystone or Towns, Kaminsky's going to have a very difficult day. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. He's not going to have 29 points like he did against Arizona. And look what Decker did in a game where he needed to step up. And he hit three after big time three. It's incredible. It incredible. Really was incredible. And I mean, the, some of the shots he was taking was phenomenal. I don't think the guards are going to give Decker such a hard time. It's the Twin Towers and Towns and Culleystein. I don't think Kaminsky's going to be the best player on the court if he's going against such a lengthy team in Kentucky. Well, I think there's one thing we know. If you're playing Kentucky, you have to have the second half that they had. You have to play a perfect game to beat this team. There's no 100%. doubt about it. So those two have to step up big time. All right, next up, can Michigan State slow down Mr. Jolly Okafor? <laughs> um, a tough question. Incredible question. You can only hope to contain the best player in the nation, Ryan, and that's in a Sparty defense who we saw, you know, against a Wisconsin team in the, uh, their championship game. They played well. They played very well, but you can't stop Julio Okafor. Julio Okafor is not Frank Kaminsky. You can only hope to contain Julio Okafor. I think you have to double team him. He's so well out of the double team. You have to slow him down to the best of your ability, but at the end of the day, can you? The answer is no. Nay. The most impressive thing about Jaleel Okafor for me right now is just his ability to take a man one-on-one. -on -one. doesn't matter who it is right now in the country. He will take you one-on-one. -on -one. He will look you in the eyes. He doesn't back you in like a truck. He looks you in the eyes and motors past you. Knows how to do it. That is NBA-type capabilities. It's an A for me. Jaleel Okafor will be the best player in that contest on Saturday evening against Michigan State. Yeah, it's certainly going to be an interesting matchup, especially with the Michigan State defense being so tough. I mean, that's sure. really what got them this far, in yes. my opinion. All right, let's keep it rolling with the Duke theme here. Can Justice Winslow keep rolling for the Blue Devils? I think he's been the best player on the floor for them in this tournament, for sure. Well, this kid's fantastic, and he has been their Mr. X all season. I think he's one of the most explosive players in the country, Ryan. Six foot six, so tough to guard, can hurt you from all different angles, Corey. And the way that he's playing right now, not afraid to take it to the bucket. And that's what I'm so impressed by with the Duke Blue Devils right now, folks. They face a Gonzaga team. People don't, they don't remember here. You have to remember that Przemek Karnowski, as well as Dementes Sabonis, these guys are, are towers. Gonzaga has towering figures. We're not even talking about Kyle Wiltshire, all standing at least six foot ten tall. And 
You know what? Time and again, Justice Winslow goes into the lane and figures out a way to get past him. How? I don't know, but we talk about Quinn Cook, Tyus Jones. Well, how about Winslow? He's just such a dynamic player, and he can hurt you in so many ways. All right, so, Corey, really quick, do you, do you think he can keep it going really quick? Uh, I do not think so. I think Brandon Dawson is a Spartan wow. that can slow him down. Mm. 61 points per game is not a lot in basketball. This Spartan defense is doing a really good job. Tom Izzo knows how to get it done. He knows how to shut down players who can get it done. I don't think he can get it going. Well, Tom Izzo has been known to reach a lot of Final Fours, but he's uh, not a lot of championship games, so we'll see. All right, now we'll move on to another segment. It's called the Unsung Hero for each of the two games going on uh, this weekend in the Final Four. So we'll start with Michigan State and Duke. We'll stick with that for a little bit. Uh, who's your unsung hero? Corey, I'll start with you this time. Ryan, it's going to be Matt Jones, sophomore guard for the Duke Blue Devils. He had 16 points and three rebounds, and his big you – know, a sophomore on a stage so that big, I mean, he's got to perform – doesn't necessarily need to have 16 points in hoping to beat Michigan State, but Michigan State does play a phenomenal defense. If you can throw eight or nine points in there, it's going to help. Like we said, who's going to stop Okafor? He's going to be, you know, obviously a big contribution to all, all of Duke's points. At the end of the day, you know, a spark off the bench never hurts any team. And if he wants to advance, help his team advance, I think Duke will be in the championship game. Well, who's been stuck in single digits in a good portion of the tournament, but played big time in Michigan State's victory over Louisville. Had 13 points to win and add something at 6'3", Ryan. He's a guard. And if Cleveland State had him this year, they would have gone dancing on the Horizon League. The Vikings have Bryn Forbes. He transferred to Michigan State. And Forbes has delivered from the start a big-time wing for Tom Izzo to go to at 6'3", at 13 the game. Can really shoot the three ball. You need big-time shot makers. We look at a lot of teams around the country, and if – you don't have that guy that can come in and give you 12, 13 points, and I got another one for you coming, then you are not going to be able to get it done in the NCAA tournament. You need a complete performance. Forbes gave Michigan State that to get to the Final Four. All right, and really quickly, switching over to what might be the game of the century. I mean, this is going to be one hell of a rematch. Wisconsin and Kentucky. John, who's your hero for Kentucky? Well, I am going to go ahead with Kentucky and you know what, this is a tough one, but I'm going to say Devin Booker, 11 points per game. The freshman, he certainly knows how to get to the lane. He's got to finish. The freshman has great talent. I have confidence in the Harrison brothers. They've been in this seat. If they get production from Booker, good night. Good night. Kentucky will go to the finals. And for, Corey, for you, Wisconsin, I mean, who, who is your unsung hero? Try to pick someone other than Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker. It's tough. I think it's going to be tough. I mean, Wisconsin's not really deep. And I think what it comes down to, it, if they want to talk about unsung hero, I think it's you really can't for this team. It's it's more of a team Collective. effort, and you can't one man cannot beat a Kentucky mm -hmm. team that has platoons of players that are going to go to the NBA. I mean, it's tough to say an unsung unsung hero, but I really can't choose one for this team. You got to make your shots when you go on the court when the coach calls your name. You talk about Tom Izzo on one side. How about Bo Ryan on the other? Mm -hmm. Well deserved to have two straight appearances in the Final Four. The first two appearances he's had in his career, the old man getting it done. Well, just the coaches in general. You have Coach K, of course, yeah. he's been there 12 times, tied the record. You have Tom Izzo, who's been there a lot of himself. <laughs> uh, John Calipari and Bo Ryan. I mean, you know, it doesn't oh, get any better than that for sure. Awesome four. All right, so now, guys, let's move on to our picks for the Final Four weekend. We'll start with the big-time matchup in Kentucky and Wisconsin. Mr. John Fanta, you say that Kentucky cannot be beat. Will they be beat this weekend? They will. Really? The Wisconsin Badgers oh, will pull boy. it off. I am taking Wisconsin. Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker are playing at an insane level. And we are talking about unsung heroes, folks. I want you to get to know six foot seven sophomore Nigel Hayes. Mm. This kid has been lighting it up as of late. He's got 34 points in his last three games. He can rebound the basketball well over 10 rebounds in his last three games. He also contributes to the assist com. He had four assists this past weekend in the win over Arizona. Hayes has delivered. They need Josh Gosser to hustle. The Big Ten is very underrated and the Wisconsin Badgers are playing red hot basketball. I got a feeling that the Badgers will go to the championship game. Kentucky will go down. I'm going bold. Wow, that's pretty bold. Corey, what about you? I'm going to have to agree with John. And oh, my goodness. I think the Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin Badgers can get it done. I think if you're Coach Ron, you thank Notre Dame because they came up yeah. with a formula how to contend with the Kentucky Wildcats. As much as the Twin Towers are scary, you got to attack them. Use the baseline, too. And right. when you attack them, they were given the opportunity. They only lost by two, and 
look what happened. Notre Dame could have won, but they couldn't do it at the end. Well, as Chris Berman likes to say, you're all in Wisconsin. Yeah. So I, I just don't see, blue on. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see this Kentucky team getting beat. Now, I know that they had a squeaker against Notre Dame, a team that matched up with them very well. But really quickly for me, I just think the Twin Towers are really going to shut Kaminsky down. I think it's going to have to be a big-time second half for Bo Ryan to have his team win this game. I really do. So now, quickly, we'll move on to Michigan State and Duke. Uh, I'll, I'll make my pick really quick. I, I think Duke is going to make uh, make it back to the championship game. They're due, um, and I just Tom Izzo just isn't very clutch in, in final four games to make it to the championship. So uh, I'm going to pick Duke, John. Go ahead. It's Winslow versus Dawson. It's a huge matchup. If Justice Winslow gets going, Duke's unstoppable because I love Quinn Cook and I love the way that he can orchestrate this offense. And on top of that, Tyus Jones is a warrior. Uh, the Duke Blue Devils, because of the way Winslow is playing right now, they're not going down. They will go to the championship game. I disagree. I, I love Izzo Spartans. I love him. I love Trice. And if Trice gets going, I don't think anyone in the country can slow him down. I don't. Lo- I do not like Jones on defense. I do not like Cook on defense. Like John said, they can orchestrate, but does that mean you can play defense? Hmm. So I really love Trice. If he can get it going, Valentine had a sensational game. Dawson, like we said, you can't contain Okafor. But if all three of those big three for the Michigan State Spartans get it going, watch out. Big right. Ten lover here. Yes. Well, the Big Ten's had a great year. I mean, talk about Ohio State winning the, the football championship, uh, two teams in the Final Four, the wrestling championships as well. They're, they've, they've been unstoppable this year in Division One <laughs> sports for sure. So, uh, so just like apple pie and hot dogs, I don't know if hot dogs is American, but the Fanta rant is probably the, the second most thing that comes to it. Uh, and, and, John, you want to talk about the coaching carousel that's going on uh, around the nation with big-time programs like Texas, uh, Alabama, and Wichita State. So go ahead. It's your Fanta rant. Well, I want to zone in on Rick Barnes at Texas, who is out of Texas and takes a job at Tennessee. And then Chris Mullen takes a job at St. John's after Steve Lavin is out. Starting with Rick Barnes. The guy has done fantastic things. He had taken Texas to 16 out of 17 NCAA tournaments. I realize there was pressure on him, folks. But Texas, be careful what you wish for, because Rick Barnes delivered success. 16 of 17 NCAA tournaments just doesn't happen. Just doesn't come out of the blue. The, the Longhorns will be back. But Rick Barnes going to Tennessee, the Volunteers win out of everybody here. And in the SEC, they really get a big-time win. For St. John's, Chris Mullen, St. John's likes to make make big splashes. It's the way that they do things. Steve Lavin is out. He was the type of big-headed guy. He created attention. The program was becoming more about Lavin than it was becoming about the players. And now you get a former player and a legend in Chris Mullen? So what are you aiming for? You're going to go ahead and get another coach that really the story could co- become more about him than just the players? And since when has the Chris Mullen move been a great move? It's a great move for publicity, but as far as I know, Chris Mullen hasn't coached one game. And in South Orange, Kevin Willard has. There's something to stay about stability. All right, John, thank you very much. I think that was very interesting for sure. It's going to be interesting to see uh, you know, how these coaches pan out for sure. And how about Rick Barnes? I mean, 400 uh, and 100. I mean, that, that's incredible that's how we got fired. But Texas, Texas is tough. <laughs> right, of course. Ryan, it's... all I'm saying is be careful what you wish for. That's what my mom always told me. All right, so thank you for joining us tonight for Hall Talk. Uh, John, Corey, thank you so much. Corey, great job thank on you. your first show. Of course, we'll return next week with the very best in Seton Hall Athletic Sports. Of course, spring is here, so now it's time for some baseball and some softball out on the diamond. Of course, Mr. Fanta will have some coverage of that on ShoePirates.com. But for these two boys, John Fanta and Corey Pontanella, I'm Ryan Flannery. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Hall Talk.